welcome. Welcome to you. Thank you for coming today and watching me talk about the comics that you saw at your own local comic book shop. Um, so I'm going to do a video. I, you know, I finished my stack from not Wednesday, but the Wednesday before. If you remember from that video, it was a pretty big stack. And I realized there's no football on today, at least worth watching. Uh, actually, there's no football at all on. Um, so I was like, hey, let's just do a review. So I, I cracked open a beer. This is uh, Garage Brewing uh, Belgian Triple. And it's okay. I, love, I drink a lot of beer out of cans. I'm okay with cans. I think most, um, you know, better beer, craft beer drinkers are okay with cans nowadays. But um, the Belgian beer in a can is a little strange and it gives it its own little, gives it a, I don't know where I am on it. It's interesting, which means it's good to me. You know what I mean? It's basically like, it's basically like Tom King or Grant Morrison of beer. Like, what the, what the hell is going on? Why did you do this? And then I still read it. Okay, so let's just get into it. Um, you know, in between beer sips, if I spill them on video, I promise to put it on YouTube and then have a cry session. Um, so these are in no particular order. In fact, they probably should be in a better order, but I didn't feel like it. So let's go with Nightwing 56. We're still on the Nightwing is a, you know, not Dick Grayson, he's Rick Grayson thing. Um, sort of like a Nightwing team forming. What I don't want is this to be an arc and we forget about it. I want that. I want Nightwing getting shot in the head in that uh, that issue of Batman. I want it to to be meaningful and not just be a six twelve issue arc. So, on the cover of Nightwing fifty, we were informed that this that Nightwing will never be the same again. Is that a glare? Jeez. Let's pause it so I can fix that. The sun. Let me move the goddamn sun. Well, I'll just stand in front of a different window, I guess. Anyway, um, hopefully him getting shot in the head matters. Uh, there's lots of pictures. Every every comic book in Marvel and DC, an ad where some hero is dead. You know, Batman dies like four or five times a year, it feels like. So if something happened, you know, they made it immediately, made you immediately recognize that Nightwing wasn't dead. Hopefully there's some um, complete, and, you know, hopefully we get a, a different Nightwing, not a different Nightwing, but a different take on him until they reset the universe again and then we can just get the regular Nightwing. Oh, geez. Okay. Maybe I should start editing. Um, here's an indie book from Alterna. This is Blood Realm. I showed this before. I got in on this book on number two, so I was a little confused coming in. It's only a three-part series, but... Um, you know, it, this part was easy to pick up. It has that real red, black, white, real artsy kind of style. Now this is not, this was the first alternative book I really picked up. So I thought that, oh, that might be standard, that it's gonna have that extremely indie look. But, um, you know, it's this is actually just a very special book in that in that sense, that it, it's the way it looks. So we'll, ta we'll take a look at Robert Geronimo. Um, we'll see what kind of work he does going forward, uh, you know, with other companies or, or new stories, or if he continues Blood Realm, we'll see. Um, man, I've been just, I've been enjoying this book, you know? It's like, I know a lot of other, like, images try to do it. They, everyone's trying to make their own, like, superhero world, uh, you know, and, and you can't, because DC and Marvel have just been doing it now decades and decades. It won't feel the same. And somehow... DC is able to take a little and give a little and not just do like an ultimate Spider-Man or spin-offs of, of heroes. They've, uh, they've been able just to really make, you know, spin out of metal, uh, a really good sort of superhero unique universe, uh, that I'll probably, I'll probably just start picking it all up, especially because it looks like it's not too much longer, going to be, uh, too much around too much longer. So it'll almost be for me like an Age of Apocalypse thing where, it, on the side, I'll just pick up the um, the issues, get a full run of the all new age of superheroes. Maybe that's just in the back of my mind. But I've really enjoyed Silencer. I probably would enjoy um, Damage and all of those. And to tell you the truth, I found 
just from reading other stuff, and, and I'm sure I've read him a lot because I went and looked at what he read, but Dan Abnett, who I'm not sure is the actual writer on this, but I know it's this has been his brainchild. Dan Abnett is a, is a, um, is a writer I think I didn't realize I liked. So Jack Herbert and, and Dan Abnett wrote this. Um, so I need to sort of go into my memory bank, see what I've read from him, and, and I, he might have a new fan follower that gets uh, finds everything. So this is Scrimshaw number one. So this is volume two, Scrimshaw number one. There was a, a, a six issue series. And this is real cool. This has a, you know how like, so this is gonna be weird. You know how comic books are starting to have a manga influence, manga has gotten so popular. So now you'll have like these sort of cartoony views um, within like comics. Now this is, this this book has a manga feel, but it's drawn, uh, in a very comic book sort of way. So the art style looks very comic-y, and this has a manga feel, and not so much, not so much in the story or the writing, um, and not just because there's a lot of Asian characters in it, but it just has a, I don't even know how to explain it, but I enjoy this book a lot. Um, I believe that Eric Borden is local here in California, or in, uh, in Las Vegas, and, um, and I'll continue to read this. I, I think I just might start picking up all of Alterna stuff in general. Uh, this was a pleasant surprise. So these Web of Venoms, uh, they've been coming out. Even though I like the characters, um, you know, like the Carnage one and stuff, they've been cool. And this one really should just be the definition of side story. But, um, but it was just fun. So, you know, if you don't read Venom at all, if people, I know that this Donny Cates run is big. This is not by Donny Cates, by the way. This is Ryan Stegman, the, the general uh, artist on the main Venom title. And he gets some writing credit here um, along. Actually, it's just Ryan Stegman. But without giving too much what's going on in the main title, the Venom symbiote uh, or symbiote or symbiote, depending on what movie you're watching, um, is, uh, is not talking to Eddie anymore. Like a lot of the sentience or life has been taken out of him. So he's basically taken the form of this pit bull and he's still there with Venom or with Eddie Brock, but he's more of a weapon or a protector of Eddie Brock now. So he's more like a dog than a, than a, a relation, like a relationship with another being or, or something. And the fact that this is, this happened in the book really, I guess, um, I guess it focuses the fact that whoever has the Venom symbiote is in a relationship with the symbiote and they're becoming one, like, I guess, theoretically, you should be with your wife or something like that. And when you take it away, all the symbiote is a, is, is a dog. So that's, that's what's happening in the main story. This is the symbiote going off on his own little adventure, basically. So there's only, Eddie Brock's only at the beginning and end of this. And what it does is sort of, um, what it does is sort of introduce the fact that, uh, what it does is tell Eddie Brock that, that Carnage is on his way. So he goes and finds some Carnage-y stuff. I don't want to get real into it. And uh, Eddie Brock basically goes, Carnage is, Carnage is coming. So that's how it, that's how it ends. It's not a spoiler, but it's just that the story is real cool. It's Pitbull Venom. It's Pitbull Symbiote. Like if you would just, if I wouldn't explain that to you and just said, well, Venom's taking the form of a Pitbull. You'd be like, what the hell's going on there? So that's Donny Cates, his idea. The Symbiote, of course, is, or the, this story is by, by Ryan Stegman. Uh, here's Cemetery Beach. This is a uh, Warren Ellis, uh, Warren Ellis, and Jason, not Jason Aaron, the guy that works with Jason Aaron, Jason Howard. I just work with Jason Aaron. Um, this is really more of the same, but more of the same in a good way. Uh, in in the manner that there's continual action, and somehow they are able to um, somehow they are able to push a story forward. I mean, literally, the book is action scenes, and that's not cutting it down either. It's it's a it is the furthest, it is the best example of, of sort of that writer-artist art, marriage where Warren Ellis is definitely writing these action scenes and a lot of the ideas, but the artist has, it's the most, exp 
It's the most explicit, explicit version where the artist is completely responsible for telling the story. So there's text. It isn't like that Marvel run from like a decade or decade and a half ago where there was no text at all and the artist had to distill the story. There is text, but it relies very, very, very heavily on Jason Howard to tell the story, to show movement, to show action, and and to let you sort of know what's going on. And I think it's good. It's almost good practice because, you know, sometimes you're trying to read a bunch of books. Like I had to read Punisher real quick before I did this video. I, I hadn't read it yet. And all you do is you just, you read the, you read the text and sometimes you just glaze over the art, which you shouldn't do, but sometimes I do it. Sometimes I'm guilty of it. Cemetery Beach sort of trains you not to do that. Uh, you really got to see what's going on in the pictures and Jason Aaron is very successful in telling the story that way. So it's very good. So I'm going to read this Steve Orlando Martian Manhunter. When I got this, I said, well, don't expect there to be gooey Martian sex like in the first one. Guess what? There's more gooey Martian sex in this. And this cover by, uh, who did the cover? I should probably take notes, right? That would be responsible. Or... Or flip through the book and then edit the video. Um, the variant cover, though, so this is a Josh Middleton cover. Some of you probably just can see that right off the bat. I'm not that good. So the Josh Middleton cover is awesome, too. Um, and I like he. I like the Martian Manhunter. I like the way they're looking at him. I like the fact that it isn't just a copy of Tom King's vision. In fact, it's it feels like True Detective, except if Martian Manhunter did it. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna spoil this book, but last time I was afraid to spoil the what it's like kind of thing. So after the first two issues, basically what this is is a cross between Westworld and like Game of Thrones or a, a general fantasy uh, book. And I don't know where it's going and I don't know where it's gonna sit and how long, um, uh, how much Matt Groom has, has written of this, if it's supposed to be 20 issues or, or what. Uh, it has me interested in where it's going. When I say that it's, oh, it's like Game of Thrones and Westworld, you probably get an idea that, you know, that doesn't look like a fantasy cover anymore, right? So v I'm very interested to see where it's going. Um, the story is good enough that I trust it. But like individual issues, I'm like, oh, this is, this is going to be great. So it might be one that I would recommend um, to people that maybe it sort of piqued their interest and they didn't pick it up to wait for it to be in trade because you'll get the whole story instead of this like sort of periodical version of reading things where like every story, every period piece has to have a beginning, middle and end. This one is, this one we're clearly still sitting at the beginning. Um, and whether that's worth it to you to spend $3.99 a month on that is a different story. Worth it to me because I think it's pretty good. Um, I think this is the best one of the Age of the Republic or Age of sort of series. You know, I don't, like I said before, with the, I didn't like the Qui-Gon Jinn one a ton. It was fine, but it was just filler. You know, he went and had a force, uh, a force vision on a planet. And it's like, okay, I figured he would have had that in his time anyway. Like, Qui-Gon Jinn is an awesome character. Why, why haven't we just delved into the meat of his story, um, especially pre-Clone Wars? You know what I mean? Why don't we have a Padawan, a younger Padawan version of Obi-Wan with his master, Qui-Gon Jinn? You know, and and really, we could show Obi Wan uh, um, really getting cut off from the full training and then becoming a great master on his own. We could see that in Clone Wars, you know. But Django adds actually adds to the 